What's your view exactly on this Xinjiang bill that's making its way through Congress? And does this increasing scrutiny on China and its repression of Uyghurs in Xinjiang, does this actually change China's direction in the region? That's, of course, always the big question. Um, I think it's important to look at this bill from several different angles. Uh, one angle is to say doing this is necessary. It's the right thing for humanity, even if it doesn't do anything to change what China is doing, even if it actually ends up harming the interests of the United States. Um, what the U.S. Congress and the U.S. government are doing there is doing the right thing. It's not only speaking out, it's starting to take action. And in doing so, they've actually gone a whole step above any other government in the world, one has to say, to move from naming the child by its name to actually doing something about it. Adrian, there's a lot of opacity around the numbers of people that are actually detained, the number of detention camps. The U.N. has estimated that there are as many as one million. What does your latest research show about the number of people detained and the number of camps that are being built out? I've been able to benefit firsthand from the most recent uh, leaked documents and from other data sources that give us uh, unprecedented insight, uh, not only into the nature but also into the scale of this atrocity. I was able to look at spreadsheets that show, basically uh, permit us to calculate the percentages of those interned in a certain Uyghur majority regions. And I uh, consequently uh, increased my number estimate of those who are or have been interned uh, to at least 900,000 and up to 1.8 million, and the number of facilities to at least uh, 13 to 1,400. So, Dr. Zenz, I, I just want to get back to the bill here, uh, because the U.S. State Department already imposed a lot of visa uh, restrictions back in October uh, for Chinese officials who, who are allegedly responsible uh, for the detainment of, of Uyghur people. They, they've already banned U.S. companies from exporting products to some of these Chinese surveillance companies. And when it comes to this latest bill, if it becomes legislation, how far do you think these sanctions can actually go? Uh, the latest bill um, is prescribing global Magnitsky sanctions for officials who are um, found to be significantly involved in this atrocity. And actually, Chen Quanguo, party secretary of Xinjiang and the main culprit after possibly Xi Jinping, he's actually explicitly named in the bill. So I think that's quite a big deal. It's a next level up. We also have to see um, the previous actions were taken by the initiative of the State Department. This, however, is actually mandating the administration across the board, not just one department, uh, to do something about it. Magnitsky sections had been discussed before. Uh, the Treasury was resistant. Um, they're the ones who typically have to okay Magnitsky because of the financial uh, implications. But they were resistant because they prioritized the trade deal. Uh, this bill basically means that lawmakers are forcing the Trump administration to place the human rights of the Uyghurs and the Kazakhs above the trade deal. Hmm. Right. Do you think it eventually makes the Chinese, I wouldn't say change their mind, but uh, perhaps adopt, adopt somewhat of a different policy from what's going on right now? Does it, the, the, does it move the needle is what I'm trying to get to. Yes, that is a very good question. Now, the problem is that this is very unilateral. It's coming from the United States, a government and a country that's, of course, already at trade war, at a direct head-on-head -head competition with China. Some people speak of the beginning of a new Cold War. The Chinese, in some ways, have um, no option to back down here, because if they did back down, it would be seen as a sign of weakness. So that is the main problem with unilateral United States action as good and well-intended as it might be. What we really need is a far more multilateral approach, the involvement of the European Union, other Western, but especially non-Western governments, especially from the Belt and Road Initiative countries that Beijing is seeking to court even more than the West at the moment. And the problem is the main difference here is apparently going to be made by the new data leaks, because governments in Europe have now had media requests put to them as a result of the China cables, the Xinjiang papers. And they've had to come out and say something. And they're starting to say that this has to stop, that measures have to be taken. I think what we see at the moment is a tectonic shift from an action 
the cost of not speaking out on this moral issue is increasing by the day. Adrian, the New York Times published hundreds of documents detailing the policies in Xinjiang. They say that the leaker was part of the Chinese political establishment. What does this say about the internal dissent within Chinese leadership about how to deal with the issue in Xinjiang? We've often wondered about whether the uh, Han Chinese, especially officials, are simply going along with this atrocity. Um, but the leaks clearly show it is more dissent than what we have. Uh, known. Um, they are part of a passive resistance. The passive resistance uh, has been in a lack of implementing, um, a lack of pulling through as hard as Beijing has demanded. Um, and that's a very interesting form of resistance because even passive resistance is very dangerous. But the leaked uh, papers even speak of one case of active resistance where a county chief uh, actually released supposedly 7,000 camp detainees because he said, look, I cannot make my economic and poverty alleviation targets if all these people are placed in camps. And he was heavily punished as a result. But it's very interesting insight into the workings of a very, very large and complex and notoriously difficult to control bureaucracy. And it would be interesting to see how much longer Beijing can push through with this internment without more at least passive resistance on the ground.